Hey brothers, this is Justin with Masonic Improvement. In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about Millennial Freemasons. But before I get started, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so now. I usually post uh, new videos about once a week or so. So if you would like to keep up with uh, everything I'm posting, that's the way to do it. Just go ahead and click that button. So recently in the uh, Texas Freemasons group on Facebook, a brother shared some articles talking about millennials in the fraternity. I'm not gonna share that here just because, I mean, these are articles someone else has written. I really wanna mess with the te technicalities of sharing you know, other people's stuff like that. But if, you, if you're interested in actually reading the articles, uh, you can look on the Texas Freemasons group if you're a member, and you can, you can pull those up and check them out. And I'm not going to address uh, specific points. I guess this is just gonna be a rant. But every time I read something, and very often when I hear something uh, that is written by older brothers about the millennial Freemasons, um, I end up getting this image in my head of some old man yelling at those damn kids playing in his yard. And that's what it seems like every time. You know, it's like they're trying to understand the millennials and they want, you know, they want them in the fraternity. We need them in the fraternity. Obviously, we already missed uh, one generation. We can't really afford to miss anymore and, and remain um, a viable organization in my opinion but there's just this huge disconnect between the older generations and this millennial generation and I think a lot of the problem is the World War II veterans you know they came home and they joined a fraternity in mass and they kind of shaped the fraternity how they felt it should be and I think in many cases they've been doing it a certain way so long that they don't really understand and they definitely don't appreciate uh, younger younger generations with totally different mindsets and experiences wanting something different than what the, the fraternity has been offering for the past 40 or 50 years. And really what's even more frustrating, um, at least from my perspective about this, is um, they recognize that millennials are different. You know, I'm a millennial. Uh, older generations recognize that we're different and they recognize that things need to change to uh, re attract or retain us. Uh, I would actually argue that nothing needs to change to attract us, but th things do need to change to retain us. And the reactions have been mostly kind of knee-jerk. And that is, you know, reduce, um, reducing the need for proficiencies, blue lightning, you know, the one-day classes, things like this. Um, have been kind of the reaction, I think, and it's actually done more harm than good, and I, I could kind of explain why here in a little bit. No one is really, for the most part, asking the millennials, you know, what do you want out of fraternity? Even though millennials will be glad to tell you, and in many cases, you know, they're, you know, shouting on mountaintops, you know, this is really where we want to go. You know, they're approaching the worship masters, you know, can we do this, can we do that? And in many cases, they're being met with, you know, that's not what we've always done. That's not the way we do things here. And um, they leave. I'm just going to kind of share real quick from my experience um, what millennials want out of the fraternity. I have touched on this before. I touched on this very recently with another video. But since this is kind of a rant, I might cover more things. I might cover things a little more uh, in depth than I did in the other one. So um, just hear me out here. So millennials. We live in a world right now where so many things are available immediately. And uh, we can, we can uh, gather any kind of information immediately. Games or you know, any kind of entertainment is available immediately. Um, you know, that's games, TVs, movies, um, anything like that. I mean, it's, it's all immediate. In many cases, uh, especially the younger millennials have grown up with this kind of immediate satisfaction as, immediate uh, you know instant gratification for things that, that they're wanting and it sounds nice but I really kind of think it's against human nature I'm sure we get used to things I love being able to find information immediately I mean that's very helpful but it the thing about it is um, this instant gratification is very shallow and it's not very fulfilling um, so I'm not saying like information is a bad thing I think I think Easy access to information is fantastic, but like this, this everybody wins kind of scenario, this instant gratification that older generations seem to think is great, is is it's really not, and it's very shallow, 
and it creates this void. And as millennials, we may not know that's something that we feel like we're missing, but I think it's something that we intuitively seek out. And that is something to actually fill that void. And that's why I think uh, Freemasonry is very appealing to millennials. I don't think that there is an attraction problem, it's a retention problem. So what we're doing is we're looking for something that is slower and deeper and more meaningful. And, and we know that this is an or, old organization and we don't really expect some things to be immediate. In many cases, we expect something that's more traditional. We understand that there's ceremony and ritual. We, we in many cases, expect to probably pay more than, you know, than the dues usually are. And in many cases, we're fine with that. We want something different. In a world of mystic gratification, we want something that actually has substance and meaning. And the reaction in many cases from the older generation is to say, well, you know, they grew up with computers and everything's immediate. They don't have the intention span to deal with anything that takes longer than a month or two or even a day. So let's do, um, you know, one day classes. Let's make it so that you have to memorize less. Let's get the dues really cheap because, you know, they got families and everything. And it's, it's so many of these reactions have been kind of the opposite of what we're actually looking for. And the thing is, this is these are all superficial changes and they're not actually changing things in the fraternity that need to change to actually keep us. And what kind of things am I talking about? Well, there's the dues, like I said, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. And I'm not suggesting raising dues just for the sake of raising dues. Uh, that increase needs to go towards actually sustaining the lodge in, in providing the programs that they keep everybody. Another thing we need to start doing is really raising the standards, not lowering the standards, expecting, expecting it to attract more people. We need to raise the standards because that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for something that's not cheap and easy and quick. We want something that we actually have to work for that has meaning to attain. So raise those standards and those standards apply to everything. I'm talking about the standards uh, for the ritual, the standards for your dress code, the standards for your meals, the standards for the standards for your lodge appearance, the standards for your behavior in lodge. This applies to literally every aspect of the fraternity. And the goal is to constantly work on raising that bar and improving the standard of everything in your lodge. Constantly, there is no end to this. Keep improving your lodge. And another thing millennials really seem to want, and I'm speaking for myself, but this is from what I've heard elsewhere also. Obviously this isn't gonna to apply to all brothers, but some kind of education program, something something please and and this goes back to kind of streamlining your lodge do something about those minutes and those grand lodge communications i'll talk about that here in a second actually um because that that's worth talking about but um streamline that and then spend some time on education you need to have at least some kind of education every meeting and i'm not talking about some canned short talk that someone hasn't seen until five minutes before it's time to present it get a brother to volunteer the month before if you can to prepare something or find something that's meaningful to him and bring it and share it another thing you can do is actually find a presenter so um, for example my lodge last month we got uh, a guest speaker to come to our lodge and it was wonderful it was like the best experience I've ever had there so it things like that are fantastic um, as far as like streamlining though like that that thing I was talking about now this requires a little bit of preparation but your minutes in many jurisdictions can be printed out and passed between the brothers before the meeting actually even opens. And the brothers that actually care about the minutes can read the minutes and then instead of spending all the time actually reading them in open lodge, the secretary can be like, say something along the lines of brethren, you've had the opportunity to review the minutes. Are there any corrections or changes? Bam, there you go. That took, you know, a whole five seconds to do. Uh, the same thing with Grand Lodge communications, uh, in many cases, unless that piece of communication actually says it has to be read in the lodge, post it somewhere. Post it outside in the dining room. So for Grand Lodge communications, the secretary can just indicate that it's posted outside. Read whatever Grand Lodge actually requires you to read and be done with it and move on. And you have no idea how wonderful that would be. Really. So that's all I'm going to say. Like I said, it was really kind of a rant. I don't know how productive many of you will feel like this was, but I'm just, it's just, it's so frustrating. And uh, being treated like 
you know, millennials are like some weird alien species that you don't really know how to relate to or what to do with, but you want to associate with. Um, we're here and we're, you know, we're real people. We'll tell you what we want if you just ask us, but um, just all these knee-jerk reactions and treating us like we're some kind of necessary evil, you know, in the fraternity, you know, it feels like some kind of like a Discovery Channel episode where, you know, we have this, this, these older brothers in the wild, you know, watching millennials and just kind of, you know, trying to interpret what we're doing when really we'll just tell you, um, we'll tell you what we want, we'll tell you what we expect out of fraternity, or at least many of us will, all we ask is that we're given a chance. And all of these things that are being changed, um, just kind of out of assumptions, and all these things that are being written as the older brethren are trying to interpret, you know, what we're really about, is, is <laughs> I really don't know what, what the deal is with that. It's just, it's just weird. And these articles are like, why you, I mean, it's, they're so far off base. They're just treating us, you know, it, it, you know, in one case it talks about how to deal with the millennials. And I mean, that mentality, you know, the how to deal with these kids in your damn yard, you know, when, when really you want us there, but you really don't want us actually doing anything. Nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to get better, and we're, you're just going to run us off because that's one thing. And that's the problem with millennials, really, is you really, in most cases, get one or two chances, and they will get disillusioned and move on. And it's not, it's not an attention span thing. But if we join the fraternity and we get the impression that it's not an authentic experience, then we're just going to move on and not really worry too much more about it. So anyway, that, that's all I'm going to say about that. Like I said, this was a rant. So if you enjoyed it, please hit like. And if you don't, I'm sorry. You know, not every video can be uh, wonderful, I suppose. But thanks again, as always, for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.